Welcome. My name is Rochelle Beachy, and I am a top leader in a company called Paparazzi Accessories. We have an awesome training for you guys today. We are the Royal Rockstars, and recently we had a crazy awesome, powerful leadership retreat, um, and I invited a bunch of my leaders there. We also had a special master trainer um, that trained us in uh, DISC, the DISC personality, and um, how we as leaders can um, understand each other and understand where uh, the different personalities are coming from and how to relate better as leaders to become a better version of ourselves. So I'm going to go over the details here um, of that in a little bit here, but basically um, what we're gonna share with you guys was from a small breakout session that we did um, at the very end of that training that was really, really powerful and it helped us to understand each other, where we're coming from and how to be better leaders um, for our team. So we're gonna go over the details of that a little bit. In case you guys are clueless about the whole DISC thing, you can always Google it. You can get free tests and things on um, Pinterest, Google, that sort of thing. Um, but we have, uh, the D stands for dominant. Um, they are direct, decisive, they're the doers. Then we have the I, who is the influential one. They are inspirational, interactive, very interesting, life and party. Um, then we have the S, they are the steady, the stable ones, supportive, sincere. And then we have the C's, um, compliant, cautious, careful, and conscientious. So most of us are generally a combination of a couple of these. So this is going to be really fun. Um, so here with us here today, y'all, we have some crazy awesome leaders from the Royal Rockstars. We have Danielle Baker, who is our strong D dominant one. Then we have uh, Shannon Garden Wilson, who is our strong I. And then we have Kimberly Mole, who is our S, and Jacqueline Hughes, who is our strong C. So what we're gonna go, we're gonna go through here and we're gonna explain to you guys how to um, how to better lead your teams by understanding the disc personality types, okay? So first up we have Danielle Baker. She is First up here, so go ahead. Danielle Baker is an elite leader on our team. Hey guys, good afternoon. So um, I am a strong D personality, so I'm actually going to teach you how to teach another dominant personality or another D personality being a D as well. Okay, so reading glasses on because you can't see. All right, so as a dominant leader, your strengths teaching another D team member as long as you both share the same desires and direction, you will experience harmony uh, as you will accomplish a lot together as a team. Your mutual go uh, goals and admiration and desire will be results that will be positive and affirming. So those are your strengths as Ds together. Your struggles teaching another D personality our power struggles over control are the most frequent source of friction and of fighting. Since you both are competitive and you both want to win every battle at every cost, neither of you will give in or give up. You, will, you may think, if I give an inch, the other person may give a mile. And in many cases, of course, you're right. If you cannot reach compromise, your relationship may become a battleground. So if you have another D team member, just keep this in mind. Your strategies for a D teaching another D. Don't force issues, don't threaten them, and do not give ultimatums. You wanna balance holding a hard line with a D team member um, over some areas which they can, and give them some areas that they can control. Allow the D team member to have choices control, and authority whenever possible. Do not lecture or talk down to a D team member. Be direct and stick to business and kind of keep emotions out of it. Do not argue with the D team member. If you do, uh, they have already won the battle and they've been able to control your emotions and your reactions. So that is how as a D team member, I would address, or a D leader, I would address another D team member personality. So there you go. 
Thank you, Danielle. That was awesome. Okay, so up next, we have Shannon Garn Wilson, who is the life of the party, and she's going to be teaching about how a strong I teaches a D. Ta da! All right. I am a strong I, and I am going to teach Miss Danielle Baker. All right, Miss Danielle, strengths for me and you. Inspiring leaders will delight in the strengths of a deep person, brag about their accomplishments, and share the spotlight in any honors. Both leaders and team members possess confident, activity-driven outlooks on life, and they want to look like winners. The I leader's frequent praise for achievement and encouragement is motivating to the D person who desires to be respected. That's why I call Danielle the Danielle Baker, all right? Struggles with me and Danielle. Inspiring leaders want to be liked and they have a tendency to become too permissive while the D team member needs some freedom and choices. They must have well-defined and firmly adhere to boundaries. If the high I leader is not careful, the D person will take control. Strategies for me and Mrs. D. Danielle Baker. Understand that the D team member is direct and results driven. Get to the point when communicating with the D team member. Expect them to challenge you and do not take it personal. To the D team member, fun is for a purpose. Work first and then have fun. <laughs> Realize that the D team member will frequently push you out of your comfort zone. Me and Danielle, that is the I teaching the D. Awesome, that was great. Okay, up next we have Kimberly who is our strong S and she's gonna be teaching about how her and the Ds get along. Hey guys, so um, I am a strong S and um, the way that I would teach a D, um, our strengths are you have the ability to provide the encouragement on which the high D thrives on um, as they seek to achieve personal goals. Our struggles, um, since the D team member desires constant control and instant action, they can easily exhaust an S leader um, who wants things to stay calm and peaceful. Um, our biggest challenge between the S leader and the D team member comes in the area of pace. Um, I prefer things to stay peaceful and to work at a slower, steadier pace, um, while the D team member prefers a faster work environment with lots of activities and projects. Um, our strategies for an um, S teaching a D. Um, the D team member needs some areas over which they have control. Do not become disheartened when they do not need or want your assistance. Um, the D team member likes to do things themselves. Do not take it personally. Remember that the D team member is task oriented. Be more firm and results oriented when you address the team, uh, D team member. Let them know that you understand the bottom line and um, be decisive and stick to your decisions. Realize that you will be tested. It is important that you do not waver in your decisions. Understand that being more direct will not be easy for you, but it is necessary if you want to communicate effectively, which is very true because I have a hard time addressing my D team members. <laughs> Thank you, Kimberly. That was awesome. This is so awesome and it's just so eye opening. I love it. So up next, we have Jacqueline, who has a very strong C and um, she is going to be teaching about how she relates to the D's. So, ta-da! It would help if I unmute myself. Okay, we're ready now. <laughs> I'm gonna try not to bore y'all with too many details, which is a characteristic of a strong C. Um, the strengths, I am a C teaching a D. Strengths between the C and the D, both the leader the C leader and the D team members share a similar view on accomplishing tasks. As long as their goals are clear, they can both be very effective and mutually helpful. The struggles. If the C leader and the D team member have opposing goals, the C leader will find themselves in a hopeless battle. The C wants things done right according to their own standards. However, 
right to a D is seldom as complicated as a C team member makes it. The D member simply wants to do things their way and get actions done fast. The D team member will tend to make decisions and do things quickly. They will often miss key details that are important to the C leader. As I was saying before, key details. And that is saying like the struggles between the C and the D. As a C, let me get all the details and all the information. I'm gonna ask you a million questions. I'm gonna read everything so that when I start, I know I'm doing it right and it's gonna get done when I do it. And opposed to a D, they just want it done. They want it done now. I don't care about the details. Let's just get the task done and get it out of the way. So in that sense, they're like the hair. You done zoomed on down to the finish line and you missed everything on the way there and you got to come back and start over and I'm a little slow turtle C getting all my details and I'll pass you and I just went straight to the finish line. So those are like some of the struggles, the differences between that C and the D. The strategies, which are how we're gonna work and come together between the C and the D. Accept the fact that the D team member needs to have some control and the ability to take some action independently. Be lavish in affirming the goals and accomplishments of the D team member. This may not come naturally for you. The C leader, since you often see how something can be done just a little bit better. And if we think about that, me, I think about it in, in my life to bring it home for some of us. You know how sometimes um, I have a new baby, for example. I'm not saying that the way my husband changes his diaper is wrong. I just feel like the way I change his diaper is the right way and the best way to do it. So in allowing someone else to do some tasks, we may have a problem a little bit of problem with that makes us uneasy with how they do it and we're gonna get to the same thing but that's just one of those things with the C member you just want all the details right and it done in a certain way a step that working with a D team member will be one change and challenge after another because the risk take the risk taking is important to them do not argue with them your reasoning may not be convincing I think my husband is a little bit of a D okay most of all do not expect perfection. Even a D will eventually give up or quit trying if they are constantly criticized for not measuring up. So it's not that a C wants to criticize you. It's just we think a lot more than the normal person. I mean, we're normal, but you all know what I'm saying in this sense. So it's always easy for you to find, well, you could have did it this way or why you didn't do it that way. But to refrain from doing that with a D person because you do not want to encourage them um to give up for not measuring up rochelle awesome thank you jacqueline that was awesome sauce okay so up next we are going to be talking about how each personality connects with the eye so up next is danielle baker hey hey guys back again okay so a d personality talking to an interactive team member the strengths, uh, you are both confident and enjoy a fast-paced approach to life. The interactive team member um, will want to please you so desperately that they will follow or at least appear to follow your leadership. Struggles are, your desire to accomplish goals as a D will get results, can easily be frustrating as take, a li take life as it comes attitude for your I team member. Frequently, the I team member's focus is to have fun. Um, it clashes with that as well. Also, an I team member's tendency towards disorganization and not completing tasks may cause you to become frustrated as a D team member. That is your struggles. Your strategies realize that the I team member may never have focus or goal or be as focused or goal oriented as you do but this does not make them a bad person. Make work fun for the IT member and they will work harder and they will play harder as well. Do some projects with the IT member if possible. Provide ideas for transforming talk into action. Write down the details of what you expect and keep instructions very simple and easy to follow. Listen enthusiastically to your IT members' stories and their tales. Their ability to communicate well can be helpful. Give a lot of praise and approval, and be accepting of their expressions and emotions and feelings. 
So that is as a D team member or a D leader, how I would address my I team members. So there you go. Awesome. Thank you, Danielle. Okay, up next we have Shannon Garden Wilson, and you're going to be talking about how that you relate to other eyes. <laughs> this one's easy. Let's just have fun all the time. I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> Strengths from an high eye to an eye team member. Both of you live life enthusiastically and optimistically. You both enjoy being with people. You like to have fun. You want to impress others and freely give compliments and praise. When you make mistakes, you both will give a lot of slack and tend to forgive easily. Struggles. Here we go. Because both leader and I team members tend to live life emotionally, you may end up competing to the cent for the center of attention. Jealousy between an high I leader and a high team I team member is not uncommon. Since you both tend to be impulsive, issues such as following through on responsibilities and financial discipline can become a problem. Strategies for a high I team, a high I leader, and a high team leader. Remember to give the I the high I team member a lot of opportunities to express their ideas and feelings because we like to talk. Um, they like to talk as much as you do. Give sincere recognition for their abilities and contributions. Realize that the I team member dislikes details as much as you do. Write down who is responsible for different action items in order to keep each other accountable. Set limits, boundaries, and hard deadlines with specific detailed action. Resist helping the I team member out when they fail to follow through or fail to complete a task. This will not be easy, but it is necessary for them to grow in the area of responsible behavior because I'm impulsive. If I want to do it right now, oh, this is the best idea, let's, let's just do it. I work better that way, sporadic. That's just how it is. So that's hard doing that. Like, it's the greatest idea ever. We just came up with it. Rochelle, back to you. <laughs> Oh yeah, eyes are very creative and fun. So lots of strengths. We just have to balance it all out here and learn from the others. Okay, so up next we have Kimberly who's gonna be chatting about the eyes as well. Hey guys, so um, the supportive leader, myself and the I team member. So our strengths, um, we both have the potential to get along well. The S leader loves to have a good time and the I team member can provide the entertainment. You both provide praise and appreciation, which you both enjoy and need in order to feel good about yourselves. Our struggles, um, keeping up with the pace of the I team member can be a, a challenge for the high S, the team leader. Um, the high I likes change and moves from activity to activity like a tornado, like squirrel. Um, you prefer things to be calm, peaceful, and routine. Our strategies, um, be more outgoing and energetic with the I team member. Help the IT member set realistic goals that are broken into small increments. Their attention span is short, so they are likely to get bogged down in long-term assignments. Short-term projects are much better for the interactive style. Um, do not bail the IT member out when they have not been responsible with work or keeping on a schedule. Let them experience the logical consequences of being disorganized or forgetful, even if it is difficult at times. Help them become more organized by writing down how something is to be done step-by-step -step manner and use to-do list, but not be surprised if the list will get lost. Back to you, Rochelle. Oh, that totally cracks me up. I'm totally losing things all the time. Okay, my, even my cell phones, <laughs> bless it. Okay, up next is Jacqueline. Go ahead, girlfriend. All right, a C to an I. Strengths between the C and the I. The C's love for detail is exactly what the I team member needs in order to be more balanced and successful in life. Okay, let's say that again. I'm just playing. All right. The I team member can therefore be a, like a taking a bite out of a fresh apple to a C team member with the fun and the freshness and the skipping around and the smiles because sometimes as a C, we can be a little bit too serious. You know, we don't mean to, but we can do that. The struggles between the C and the I, since we're both on opposite ends of the task and people continuing, sometimes it's difficult for a C 
to understand why an eye needs to have so much fun and be so intense all the time, okay? With the high standards, which I have experienced this myself as a C leader, um, it's easy to overlook the nurturing and the praise and approval that an I team member needs. So that may cause them to become disgruntled or uncooperative or just not want to deal with you because you don't realize it. So it's another important thing of why we're doing these different personalities and how you can be a, a good leader like me as a C team member to our I. The strategies. As a C leader, you must modify your expectations of a I team member. Realize that they would never give the same attention to details as you. You know, they can miss some details. They may be able to come back to it later, but look at it. As long as they're doing and that they're putting their best feet forward and running like they always do, then it's okay. Let, let, let them run and get to where they're going. The I member hungers for acceptance and approval. Look at their strengths and praise them at every opportunity. It's easy for a C to overlook praising and approving an IT member because we don't necessarily need that or look for approval. So make sure as part of your strategy as a C team member that you provide that for your I team members, that you feed into them what they need. Appreciate the I team member for who they are, even if their strengths are different from yours. Appreciate their strengths. It's okay that they are different. Your strength may be, you know, getting people hyped up. My strength may be making people think about what they're doing, but appreciate them for that difference. Stop working on your projects and tasks long enough uh-oh, am I here? Okay. Stop working on your projects and tasks long enough to give the I team member your undivided focused attention. That's really easy for me to get lost in my work. When I'm focused, I'm focused. I'm on sit down. If it takes me an hour to read everything and get the test done, I'll sit there and do it until it gets done. But sometimes everybody needs a break from work. So let's pull back and realize that you need to give that to your I team member. Also, don't push for perfection. It's okay for them for it to be not perfect all right rochelle thank thank you okay back to danielle and this time we're going to be talking about how our personality relates to the s go ahead danielle hey hey guys okay so as a d or a dominant leader i would teach an s team member as follows okay the strengths is uh, you like to lead as a D and the S team member likes to follow and to help. They will feel secure as long as you show them controlled, stable behavior. The struggles are if you come to on too strong as a D, a D leader, a D personality, the S member will be intimidated and will take it personally. Hard charging D leaders often misunderstand the soft hearted, easygoing S team member and label them as weak. This can easily lead to self esteem problems and low performance of the S team member. Strategies are do not expect the S team member to figure out how to accomplish a task. You need to spell it out step by step exactly what you would like them to do. They want to please you. So wanting uh, to know how to want something done is very important to them. Be careful on how you say things to an S team member. Dominants have a very direct approach and this personality type, especially you have to be careful. The S member is sensitive and they can easily be hurt by spontaneous off the cuff negative comments or anger. Your voice tones are very important to them. Avoid being con uh, confrontational or aggressive with the S member as it will cause them to withdraw like kind of like a turtle into their shell or to disengage. Never compare an S team member to anyone else. This is hurtful, demotivating, and can cause them to just give up trying. <clears throat> Express appreciation often and be sincere to an S team member. And realize that procrastination is a real issue for the S member. So help them plan ahead in order to decrease their stress and the pressure. So that as a D leader, that's how I will address my S team members. So there you go. Awesome. Up next, we have Shannon. Go ahead, girl. Hi. Okay. Hi, I, inspiring person. 
Um, not that the S is not, um, but this is the I to how I'm going to lead and teach an S. All right, our strengths. Um, inspiring leaders will appreciate the easygoing, relaxed nature of the sensitive type. The leader likes to talk. The S team member enjoys listening. They tend to get along very well with others, with very well together, all right? Our struggles. Most struggles between I leaders and S team members center around differences in pace. She's not moving too slow. That's just how she is, all right? The high I leader enjoys a fast-paced, exciting lifestyle, and that is exactly what the high S wants to avoid. The high I likes noise and confusion. What? <laughs> the high S desires peace and quiet. The high I leader thrives on spontaneity, variety, and quick changes. The high S team member is slow to change, enjoys routines, and dislikes surprises and unplanned changes. So our strategies for a high I to an S team member. Slow down your approach. Let the S team member respond at their own slower pace. Pushing them to go faster only slows them down all the more. Allow the S team member time for making decisions. Tone down your enthusiasm. Do not make them uncomfortable by being overly enthusiastic about their achievements in front of others. Remember to provide support and encouragement towards them in private rather than in public ways. She might need you to send her a direct message and say, hey, I'm so proud of you. I love you. Thank you for, for rocking the team. She might not want it on a Facebook post, okay? Be sincere in your praise and appreciation. Um, whenever possible, give plenty of notice as to what and how things may change. As team members, do not like sudden changes or surprises, which is the absolute opposite of me to the team. Um, as, for, as for the S team members' help in getting tasks accomplished, the S team member loves to feel that their contribution is valued and wanted. Rochelle, back to you. Awesome. So up next, we have Kimberly, and she's going to be chatting about the S's. So go ahead, girl. All right. So I am a high S. Um, our strengths for teaching another S team member um, we have a lot in common and can enjoy being with each other. We both appreciate a relaxed, calm, peaceful work environment, and both of you will work to keep things that way. Um, you each help out the other to make a great team. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our struggles. The biggest struggle comes in the area of communication. You both talk indirectly and will suggest things, but neither of you want to make decisions. Um, neither of us wants to initiate that um, anything that might result in too many changes. If you are too accommodating, the S team member may become too dependent on you. Um, they may lack the ability to demonstrate independent thinking and fail to move into action. Since neither of you wants to upset the other, hurt feelings can be suppressed. Over time, this unwillingness to bring up unpleasant issues can create conflict. Um, our strategies um, initiate more specific actions in order to be more decisive. Realize that more conflict and change is healthy and help the S team member and not to shy away from conflict. I have a hard time with conflict. I avoid it at all costs. Um, this is how personal growth occurs. Um, draw out how the S team member feels and be willing to honestly share your how you feel as well. Do not sweep hurt or negative feelings under the rug, just hoping that they're going to go away because they're not going to. Back to you. Okay, Jacqueline is up next with the S. From a C leader to an S team member, the strengths between the C leader and the S team member, the C leader can appreciate the slowness of the, the slowness of the S team member relationship. We appreciate the easygoingness and that they are, they are very agreeable and avoid conflicts, just as Kimberly said, she avoids conflicts at, conflicts at all costs. The struggles between the C leader and the S team member. The C member may get frustrated because the S team member does not think things all the way through and they don't need all the details that the C team member or leader needs. 
We may worry that we cannot seem to motivate the S team member and strive for the same standards and excellent by which you operate. Those are the struggles. The strategies, beware of your tendency to focus on critical tasks that are always doing things correctly. The ST member focus is on peace and harmony and stability in the relationship. So they are definitely more people oriented than task oriented as the C team C leader is. Remember to explain how you want something done, but do not expect the S team member to figure out all the details by themselves. Show sincere appreciation for any attempted effort even if it does not come up to your own standards, because they want to know that they are appreciated and that they're pleasing you and that they're doing things right. So even though it's not exactly perfect, still show appreciation and be sincere in that because the S can definitely tell if you're being sincere or not. Be careful with your criticism. Sometimes as a C, we can come across harsh and a little cutthroat, and we do not want that to negatively affect your S team members. Most of all, do not set your expectations so high for the S team member that they feel that they will never be able to reach them. Because if they feel that they will never be able to reach your high expectations, then they won't work towards it and you'll, they'll never feel like they'll be good enough. So those are some of the things we have to be sensitive about because a C member, we're definitely a little less feely feely, you know, is details, facts. It is what it is, is one of the things that I say. So we want to be aware of those things and um take care of those precious gems those is team members awesome 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 okay so our next round here we're going to be talking about the c's how each personality relates to the c's so danielle you are up girl hey guys back again okay so as a d leader i'm going to be talking to the conscientious conscientious team member which is a c so the strengths are, since both of you focus on tasks and enjoy working independently, you share some common ground. As a team, your direction and the C members' attention to detail can accomplish a lot together. Struggles are as follows. You tend to jump into projects quickly, whereas the C team member likes to think things through into detail. You both want results, but they want, um, things done right and they want the, and you want things done now the difference in pace is a chief source of conflict your tendency to control things can be discouraging to a c team member um, who wants things who does not want things to feel pressured strategies for a d leading a c team member do not become impatient with the c member don't rush them or push them be patient and give the C member time to make decisions. Allow them time to gather all of the facts and to do things correctly in the order that satisfies their way to be correct and not yours. Be careful with criticism. While it may motivate you, the C team member may internalize the criticism very deeply. Callous comments or acts of aggression will immobilize them and stop them in their tracks. Be willing to answer this person's question and provide in-depth patiently and accept and affirm the C team member's cautious nature. Do not expect the C member to be a risk taker like you. That is so true, you guys. Don't push them. Okay? Rochelle, go ahead. Okay, awesome. Up next, we have Shannon. Go ahead, girl. Yay. All right. This is the I to the C team member, which would be Miss Jacqueline. Um, our strengths. You can learn from each other. <laughs> um, because each of your strengths provide a good balance to other team members' weaknesses. The I team leader can help you not to take things so serious and lighten up a little. This is so true. Um, the C team member can also help you think things through in a more analytical way, which I need help with that. Um, struggles. Your differences can lead to frequent misunderstandings. You love to talk and be on the go, but sometimes the C team member needs to have some quiet time alone so they can process, okay? Um, because you are so verbal, you may, you may miss the C team member's more indirect way, indirect way of sharing concerns. Um, our strategies. 
tone down your emotional reactions and your enthusiasm. They may not want information like this, okay? Um, be more factual and objective, especially in the midst of conflict. Realize that their drive for imperfection is as deeply felt as your need for fun. They cannot simply lighten up and laugh off mistakes. I find laughter in everything. It, it doesn't matter where it is. I will find something everywhere. Funerals, church, works, everything. Um, do not rush or push. Allow the C team member time alone to do quality work. All right? We want quality. Let them, let them process what it is that you gave them. You gave them a challenge. Let her think through what you just told her to do. Um, be sincere in your praise and appreciation of their work. Tell the C team member specifically what they did well in, de uh, in descriptive terms. Do not simply say, great job, terrific, or you did a fantastic job. And one thing that I did learn, I learned from Rochelle's husband, Merrill, who was a high C, and I was practicing with Merrill, and I said, Merrill, you did a great job on knowing uh, on your uh, technology abilities. And he said, what part? I learned something then that you can't just, what I tell 10 other people the same thing, I can't tell Jacqueline that part because what she did was she gave effort and, and quality time to this project and it's just as random. Oh, you did good, girl. Well, what did I do good on? So don't do that. Um, if they did something good, make sure you identify and tell them what it was that they did good. Remember their worst fear is criticism of their work. Be gentle with correcting them. Focus on uh, specific points or necessary corrections. Do not expect the C team member to be a risk taker. Accept their cautious nature. They often see things. Um, they often see things others overlook. She sees the details and stuff. I'm just well. Let's just do it because it's fun. She's gonna be like, well, let's talk about the pros and cons. Rochelle, back to you. Thank you, girl. Yeah, that's so true about Merle. Anyway, I'm an ID and he's an SC, so I mean, we have the whole thing going on here. <laughs> anyway, okay, up next is Jacqueline. Go ahead, girl. I think you met me, Rochelle, but um, I am the S to the C. <laughs> um, both of our, um, so the S to the C, both of us tend to be slower paced. Um, we need, need alone time and can, can enjoy working together without a lot of conversation. Neither of you is pushy and you both prefer to avoid conflict. Our struggles in this pair, the critical nature of the C team member can easily result in hurt feelings on the part of the S leader. You will tend to suppress those feelings rather than talk about them. The C team members inner into intuitive, logical approach to life can at times clash with your feelings oriented um, focus. You naturally work to develop close relationships and you may feel concerned because of the C team members cool calculated manner. The strategies for an S to a C um, recognize that C team members need for privacy. If there is a conflict, give them time alone to think about things. They need to process information simply ask to talk about the problem later. Be prepared to give in-depth explanations in a patient manner, as Shannon said, which part was the good part? I need to know. Um, allow the C team member time for disappointment when they have not met their own high standards. Give sincere, descriptive praise and show appreciation for good work. And do not overreact to the C team member's tendency to be critical but gently guide them to accept shortcomings as a part of the reality of life and remind them that we are striving for excellence rather than perfection. Back to you. Awesome. And so sorry, Kimberly, I didn't mean to miss you. Um, so up last but not least is Jacqueline, y'all. Go ahead. All right, we're talking about a C to a C. We say the C's for last, the best for last, C's and C's. So, the natural combination to produce excellent between the seeds is a natural combination. You can enjoy working hard together, some on the task or project to give full attention to what needs to be done. You both are prone to seriousness, but you both are dedicated to quality, excellence, and doing things the right way. So those are the strengths. Now, struggle between the seeds. Even though we're the same personality types, we are different people. So we could very well see how to do one task, we have two different views of how what is right on one way to do it. So the struggle would be that we're both 
feel very strongly about my way is the right way and you think your way is the right way. But we can quickly shut down and withdraw the plan to move on. So if, and I see that in myself, basically if I can't have something done the way I want it to be done, I just won't do it. So it depends on what it is in life. Like that's, that's really how I am. If, I, if it can't be done the way I want it to be done, then I just won't do it. So that could be that could be a struggle between a C leader and a C team member because they may feel like their way is better or that is the right way to do it. The strategies. Be open if your C team member suggests a different way of doing something, which will be a struggle, but to be open. Because we both are smart and see things that others overlook. We just need to be open with the different ideas that we both have. Be willing to be flexible with some of your standards in order to finish the job in a mutually acceptable way. So instead of getting hung up on which way is the right way, as long as we're headed towards the same goal, don't be flexible with the standards so that we can get finished rather than being so, rather than being so hardcore on them that you're just stuck and you can't move past it. Be careful when you correct the C team member. You know very well that criticism of your work is one of your own greatest fears. Now, I personally take constructive criticism very well no i don't like it who likes it but it, it's not anything that i get hung up on i openly accept it it is one of those things that you know that makes you cringe a little bit but you take it like casserole you know it's gonna do you better but it's nasty but you're gonna take it okay that's how that's how i am with it but all c's are not like are not that way do not overreact when the c team member criticizes you remember that no one is perfect and we all have room for personal growth like you, this person needs to be valued. Be sure to express sincere appreciation for what they bring to the team. Tell the C team member exactly what they did correctly. Tell the C member exactly what they did correctly and why you like it. Tell them exactly what they did correctly and why you like it. The more specific you are with them, the better they will like it. That is very true. Back to you, Rochelle. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. That was crazy cool. And so I want to just quickly wrap it up. I know we're running out of time here, but what I would love to do is I would love for each one of you guys just to share just a, a brief, like one or two minutes quickly, um, overview of how that affected you guys at the retreat when you guys were able to do this in person and actually be able to uh, role play this out and how powerful this was. I mean, I saw tears, I saw aha moments and all that kind of stuff. So if you guys could just like wrap up something that really stood out to you and um, we'll wrap it up with that. Okay. So Danielle, you're up next. Hey guys. So I think the biggest takeaway for me being such a direct dominant personality was actually looking at the sensitivities of different team members and realizing that my direct approach, I have to soften that with tact and finesse and actually just slow down a little bit and um, natural personality is let's let's just hurry up and get these things done and sometimes i have to actually even with my husband take that backseat approach of slow down let's get some details out there let's respect the fact that other team members may take a little bit longer to get there in their process but we're all going to get to z from a at the end so that was my biggest takeaway awesome go ahead shannon you're next um, I'm going to make this brief. I think my best, biggest takeaway, um, it was very emotional, was that um, I'm naturally a happy person. So it's easy for me to always find a happy place, no matter the disarray or whatever life brings me. And um, for me to try to understand that everybody's not there all the time um, was not hard, but I found um, the S's had the most significant um um what am i looking for my words they had the most significant part of the this training for me because i was so happy all the time and they sort of kind of were being nice and responsive to me because i felt like they felt bad for me like oh bless her heart she's just yapping off at the mouth and we're just gonna listen so that for me was the hardest part and that was the biggest takeaway i'm like oh okay i need to everybody's not there and that's okay so but it was great i loved it 
Okay, Kimberly, you're up next, girl. Thank you. So the biggest thing for me, um, I'm naturally shy as a high S. I'm naturally shy. And being at the retreat and talking to, like, everybody and having to stand up in front of everybody was really tough for me. But it brought me out of my shell. It, like, opened me up. I had more conversation um, with other people that I never would have approached otherwise because I'm just not going to do that. It's just not who I am. Um, if I don't know you and I haven't had a conversation with you before, I'm not just going to just walk up to you. Like I'm intimidated by everybody that was there. Like the Danielle Baker was there. Like I watched her YouTube channels. Rochelle was there. Like just being there and being around amazing leaders and amazing people who could teach me and help me and grow, help me grow as a leader, help me grow in my business without even having a team just was super powerful for me. And I thank every single person that was there for helping me and being there and pushing me out of my comfort zone. Love it, love it. Okay, so we will wrap it up with Jacqueline. Okay. Um, yes, it was lots of tears and connections and everything there. And so a huge takeaway for me was just put myself on the other side and I was even talking to my team when we had our first team meeting um, the end of last month where it made me feel like I had done them a disservice. It's just so eye-opening because I would really be like, really, you asked that? Or, you know, in my mind, I would never verbally tell anybody that, but I would get so irritated because you missed this. Like I read every word on the paper and you just read like every other sentence. And it made me realize, I understand now, you know, why Ro Rochelle and Shannon may just be like, I'm a skimming and the words that pop out to me, those are the ones that I keep. But me, I'm just like, hold on, let me read everything. So it just made me see and realize why and to understand. And it was just so amazing to be able to grow because I see that now. So for me, it was a hard pill because it actually makes me want to cry because I feel like you know, like the the way I felt and I thought in those situations, I was completely wrong. So it's just amazing to be able to, to see, you know what? I know better now, so I'm going to do better. And I'm going to let that go. But to put yourself in the other person's shoes and understand, okay, that's why she's so excited right now. You know, like you telling me I'm about to hit like the party. I don't know what it is, but if you tell me it makes sense for me to hit it, Okay, why are you so excited? I don't know. The logical thing is for me to hit life at a party. You know, so it, that, that was just a real eye opener. And it allowed you to connect even more with your team on a personal basis because you, you can now really look at each individual individually and tailor how you can best groom and, you know, help them grow. So that was a huge takeaway for me, just being able to put myself in someone else's shoes and realize now I'm so, I, it has taught me, I'm, I'm more patient with everybody on, in, on earth now because I understand more now. So, I mean, it's just even like everybody everywhere. It just makes you think, everywhere I go, I'm gonna tell you your personality type. I need to know, so yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you, lovely ladies for sharing today. This has been so powerful. It was amazing in person. And um, this is just so fun to go through this again. And I just can't wait to see who this blesses because the more that we can understand each other and where we're coming from and our strengths and our weaknesses, um, it just helps life go smoother, I think. And we can accomplish more because we're stronger when we're able to work together and learn how to work together. So Thank you all so much for tuning in and have an awesome rest of the day. Bye.